Texture Radio. Welcome to the best kept secret rolling on the hairwaves with Texture Radio. Ladies and fellas, where you want to go every Tuesday and Thursday? Are you rolling on the hairwaves with Texture Radio? Here's your host, Jerry Tyler. Good evening, everybody, and you're rolling on the hairwaves with Texture Radio. And tonight, we're going to be talking about the big finish, the art of a blow dryer. And before we get going, I want to introduce my beautiful, talented co-host, Miss Tasha B. How are you doing tonight, Tasha? I'm good. How are you, Jerry Tyler? Well, you know what? Uh, we're in Cali. We're in, in the city of the angels, and it is hot, hot, hot today. It is hot. Very hot. It's so hot, it was a tornado in yeah. Riverside yeah. just 20 minutes ago. Ooh. <laughs> well, you know, and we're not supposed to say tornado in Los Angeles. Uh, I think they called uh, some, they always change the names of that stuff. But, you know, when we're talking about heat uh, and we're talking about style, we've got to talk about blow drying. And blow drying, you know, between the red carpet, um, you know, all the award shows. Uh, the, A lot the, of them coming up, too. Yeah. I need to get ready. Yeah, I know, because I know, Tasha, you're going to be working that red carpet. And, you know, I am. And, you know, more and more, uh, we've had so many advances in blow drying and tonight our guest is uh, an all a very dear friend of mine uh we go so far back um uh in my earlier days of hairstyling and we both evolved and grown and he is the president of ergo research styling tools and the difference with this gentleman is that he's brought so much he asks us what can i do for the stylist what can i do for the woman in the chair to make their work easier more effective uh, less stressful. You know, a blow dry Tasha is the most labor intensive thing we do as stylists. And then you, you know, when I'm not in the bathroom helping you out, you know, and getting you ready exactly. for that red carpet, you know, when you're stressed and you can't reach, you know, you have I can't a, reach the back of my hair. Yeah. It's always wet, damp in the back. Yeah. Well, I say you got good hair in the front and a bad hair day in the back, and it shouldn't be that way. And, you know, we have Robert Reed to thank because he actually goes out and he talks to stylists and says, what do you think about this switch on a dryer? What do you think about that brush? So I want to bring him on board. Robert, welcome to Texture Radio. Robert Reed. It is a pleasure to join you tonight on the Hair Waves. Hey, Robert Reed. How are you? I'm terrific. Well, Thanks. welcome joining us on the Hair Wave. And I hear you know all about the big dryers. Well, that's not a rumor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's been my good fortune to travel around the world and to stand behind the stylist who's standing behind their guests. And this is how I learn a lot about what the needs are for the professional. And eventually satisfying these needs makes their way right into the hands of the guest to take home and continue looking beautiful. Nice, nice. And I've checked out a couple of your products, um, your flat irons and your twin turbo dryer 2000 that sounds like it's dangerous i'm just saying maybe i just need jerry to use that on my hair because i might burn something out <laughs> well actually tasha you know what the, the twin turbo dryer is actually a stealth dryer i call it because the way it's designed is designed and this is the beauty of ergo is it's always designed first for the stylist but then to transfer that sphere of influence to the guest to where they can have that same experience at home because the first thing they will tell you is, we used to think it was a compliment, you know, can I take you home or can you be in my bathroom in the morning? But really, if you can't do that at home, then you're not going to be experiencing that same finish and it's until next time. So the, the, the dryers, the brushes, the irons, everything that Robert creates, he creates with both the, the consumer in mind and the professional. And uh, particularly in the area of blow drying, like I said, it's the most labor-intensive thing we do. And he's really looked at, you know, how to make things smarter and better. And that's ergonomic, which means body-friendly. Do you agree, Robert? Well, I do. And, of course, uh, being from Los Angeles, I think that we've all been exposed to what AC and DC means. Right? You don't really have to ask someone. That's true. Uh, do, you do you prefer AC or DC? But everybody always establishes their uh, personal preference. And what I'm talking about is I'm talking about the type of hair dryers we use. Because the two motor types, AC and DC, directly relate to the type of performance one can expect from them. And we've also learned that 
these different types of motors have different final results that most professionals know about, but most of their guests don't. So I think that's probably a good topic to speak about is uh, how do you know what type of hair dryer motor would be right for you? Yeah, I, w- I would like to know that because I like the, I use the Indian hair and you don't want it to always, I don't want it totally straight, so I still want that wavy look. And sometimes when you blow dry it too long, it gets too straight, mm-hmm. and I don't like that look. You know, Tasha, the one thing is this about about drying the hair is it's not always just about the dryer, but it's knowing, you know, when is dry dry? And, you know, a lot of times what we do is that when you over dry hair, because your, your hair, your, your Indian hair, your natural hair, all has a natural moisture content to it. And when you get it too straight, that's when you removed all the moisture from it. And then it's just begging for it. And then you walk out into the moisture, and then it just goes crazy. And so that's, that's why you have to know when to say when. And what you look for is the shine. Once you see the shine go away and it goes matte, you've over dried. See, that's why I need you in my bathroom every morning. Mm-hmm. I don't know this. <laughs> I yeah. didn't know. Well, sometimes when I'm in a salon and I hear, I would love to take you home with me, it's not really the come on that I think it is. It's because most people don't know how to care for their hair at home and they don't learn these insights from their own professional. Sometimes this happens when schedules get a little bit crazy and someone's running behind, but getting back to how much heat or how much airflow, it's kind of uh, easy to determine what type of motor is within a dryer because the first type, the AC motor, is really a professional type. This is an alternating current motor uh, without getting all electrical on you. I'll just suggest that this is like a V8 for an automobile. It's going to be heavy duty, last a long time, put out a lot of power, a.k.a. airflow, This is why when you pick up some dryers, they feel pretty substantial, and you can recognize immediately that's an AC dryer. A DC motor, a direct current motor, is normally about half the size of an AC motor, and this is why they're normally targeted for someone to take home because they're holding this directly over their head. So DC motors generally are... At 50% the size, they are focused on producing more heat. And this you have to be careful of because too much heat uh, outside of the kitchen, not a good thing. Exactly. That brittle look. That Mm. brittle look. Now, we've discovered the majority of dryers that guests own in their home, you know, the lighter weight dryers to hold over their head. Right. Most of these are in excess, and this is crazy, in excess of 330 degrees Fahrenheit. And this, in this temperature, in 15 minutes or less, you can bake a loaf of bread. Oh, so wow. it's no wonder there's so many dry, flaking scalps, fading hair color, and hair that's overly dry. Oh, I hate that. I, I've been using the, the type of dryer you just sit up under it. Like a hood dryer. The, yeah, the hood dryer, and then just let the rest air dry. Well, that's another that's another technique. But you know, a lot of times you're a girl on the go and having that half hour to sit under that hood dryer. You know, you gotta, you know, you gotta make it. And in, you're a busy professional. You've got to make your red carpet events. You've got your shows. So the blow dryer was, in, you know, really became big in the '70s because as as the baby boomers all went into the workplace, you know, they didn't want to sit in the dryer like their moms did. They wanted Fair to have that. Hair made hair dryers. You had to have one. Yeah. They you wanted, wanted her hair. They wanted to blow and go. Exactly. Yeah, that yeah, was cut, blow and go, baby. And, you know, Robert, talk to us a little bit about your brushes because I, I, I was in the salon yesterday for about 10 hours. I used exclusively your brushes. And I got to tell you, after doing hair almost 40 years, I left and my new intern said to me, you don't seem tired. And you blew, you blew dry every one of your guests yourself. 
And tell them a little bit about the ergo difference and the advantage of your brushes, because I still think that, that you know, I roll into the shows. I get everything in the industry is thrown at me. You are the only person who's gone to the professional and said, what can we do better and different? And you produced it. Talk to us about the ergo difference with your brushes, Robert. Well, I appreciate that kind of setup, Jerry. It's, it's really simple at Ergo Research. We are all about the professional behind the chair, and we recognize that hairdressing is a fantastic profession. A professional gets to create change, positive change on their guests, and they look in the chair and they see how their guest is smiling because of this new beautiful look. But at the end of the day, as gratifying as that is, hairdressing is physically very challenging, very demanding, standing 8, 10, 12 hours a day with your arms outstretched and if you watch a professional, you have to wonder, how can they rotate and twist their wrist thousands of times every day without the hand falling off? This is why, as we were examining some of the areas that guests said they really loved the most, especially the finishing aspect, of course, their final look, they, they want to be able to recreate this at home, but going back to the professional, when a professional uses a brush two to three hours consecutively every day, that means that really out of a month, they're blow drying hair 40 hours, one full work week a month. Most hairdressers are drying hair. So oh, wow. we wanted to take a look at what, what we could do to uh, make that more efficient, and ultimately the results are always, the final result is having a better finish, a longer-lasting finish. So we really reexamined everything going back hundreds of years about how brushes are made. Because here's the craziest thing for your audience to ask themselves. They remember, I'm sure, their mother's telling them at the end of each night to brush their hair. How many strokes? 50 to 100. 50 to 100. In fact, in every country, every salon, for every audience I've ever asked the question, the answer is the same, 50 to 100. And, but the answer the question is, well, why do we brush our hair so many strokes each night? What have you heard? To make it shiny. And it's supposed to keep it stronger. That's what I heard. It's supposed mm-hmm. to brush it and it keeps it, it, it don't tingle, especially for, you know, African Americans, you're supposed to brush it to keep the kinks out and mm-hmm. that kind of thing, especially if you're not using a lot of oil in your hair. You want to keep brushing it to get the natural shine or something. Well, it's really yeah. interesting that this material we're born with actually has, uh, at its roots, it creates a natural waxy type oil called uh, sebum, and that's with a B, S E B, U M. So our audience sebum. knows what I'm what I'm saying. And as you use a brush, and in the old days, our great 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 grandmothers used horse hair to brush their hair at night, of course. Yeah, um, that, I forgot the name of that brush. It was a big brown brush, and it, mm-hmm. it had the... My grandmother used to say that. And what it does is it, touch, it takes the natural oils from the scalp and works it out through the hair by doing that. And that's what we do, uh, and we're continuing to do that now. Um, and the the great thing that I like about the Ergo brushes is, is that he's actually discovered that them being nylon, it actually smooths the outside of the hair and polishes it as opposed to the old boar bristle, which is made from a, the boar. And that actually creates low-level abrasion. So what we thought from some of the natural boar bristle was actually polishing, was actually creating, like it was scraping it, and that was creating that, that feeling of shine, much like when you when you polish silver, there's, there's abrasion in that cream, and that's what creates the shine. But it's not really polishing it. It's actually creating abrasion and creating damage. 
So, um, you know, forward thinking brushes, Robert. I know I'm a big fan. Um, we're going to be going to a break. Uh, and then we're going to come back. And I want to talk about the big finish because irons are in the fire. You're listening to Texture Radio. Welcome back to Texture Radio. We're talking to Robert Reed of Ergo Research and Styling Tools, forward thinking tools for both the professional and to our guests in the salon, and we've been talking at first about blow drying, but Robert, you know, let's talk about the big heat, and you know about irons, we've had so much evolution in iron work, um, particularly with the beach waves, the straight and silky, the, uh, the texture work, and again, you have been on the forefront of this, and we've seen irons evolve a lot over the last 20 years, moving from curling irons to flat irons to all kinds of irons, but uh, it's in everybody's home, and Again, bravo, you've done it again with, with the ergo um, irons that can both straighten, smooth, and wave and curl all in one. Great flat irons. I keep going back to flat irons. I don't do curlers, so I don't like curlers. I just never have. Well, you know what? I've learned a lot from working with Robert because being a developer and a manufacturer, he actually works from the inside out. And then um, I do education with him, so I've had a chance to really learn what's behind it. And... You know, Robert, why don't you talk a little bit about heat and, and irons and, and what actually makes it different from a blow dry? Well, what's fantastic about the tools today, especially something like a flat iron, which seems, oh, it's ubiquitous. Everyone has one in their home or they have one in their travel bag. This was a tool that the women around the world waited thousands of years for. But in the interim, they used different types of irons, more visually common to an iron that you might use for your clothes. And it's that similarity in appearance that I'd like to speak to because there are similar effects upon the hair. Um, It's interesting that everyone speaks about very high heat. You know, for some professional treatments, we are using 450 degrees Fahrenheit. And needless to say, that's a professional temperature that one would only want to use with uh, a professional on hand to ensure that they don't damage their hair. But generally speaking, using a flat iron on the hair is going to have the same or a parallel effect as if you used a clothes iron in creating a crease or smoothness on some fabric because it employs heat and compression to give you that smooth outer layer of the hair called the cuticle. And we also use another physiological effect called tension. So we're pulling on the hair. This is actually what is causing the hair internally to get straight and aligned and cool in its new form. So flat irons, well, our mothers used to lean their hair forward and use an iron, a clothes on their hair to give them smoothness. Now we just have the convenience of using it in our hand with a cord. But there are some cautions suggested for a flat iron, and that's to remember just as we can uh, make a matte fabric shiny like black jeans by using too much heat, we can create a shine. It looks shiny, but it's not healthy. We've actually fused part of the outer layers of the cotton or the wool, whatever we're using, and for human hair, we have to remember the same thing. There can be some permanent damage, so understanding how heat works This is going to be a real advantage to anyone who is seeking healthy, shiny, uh, vibrant, feeling hair. Robert, could you go through real quick, because I know that there's some key temperatures that we want to look to as we look at, because everybody, not everybody has the same kind of hair. Some people have fine hair, color-treated, excessive curl, you know, high-density 
What are some of the key temperatures that we want to look at? You mentioned 450, but you know, let's say going down, if someone has some challenge tear, what would be some of the temperatures we want to look towards, to, to move towards? Well, as you know, I serve as a developer for professional tools for just about every hair color company in the world. Uh, the L'Oreal companies, the Procter & Gamble professional brands. Oh, wow. Goldwell, just about all of them. And what we've learned is that for... Anyone with color-treated hair, and I'm asking you to listen very closely, color to appear vibrant needs to have a healthy surface, and that's the cuticle. So we've learned that any temperature in an iron over 390 degrees, that's 390F, when used with compression or the squeezing motion that we use for an iron, can create a permanent crispiness or a permanent damage to the hair. Technically, it's called spot keratinization, but to the person who owns and lives with that hair, they're going to know that hair is kind of crispy, crunchy, and uh, almost always very difficult to have even color on because of this molten, melted, surface that's occurred. So we want to suggest anyone with fragile or color-treated hair, you should always dial down your iron to 390 degrees. Now, there's been a misunderstanding that hotter is faster. Not true at all. What we've learned is even on the thickest, most resistant types, if we use that same suggested temperature of 390 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's just below the ceiling of 392, which is the critical area, we can gain smoothness simply by moving through the hair at a slower rate of speed. Instead of using a very high heat and working through the hair rapidly so we're not singeing it, in that case, the heat can penetrate the hair to do the job to straighten the inner structure of the hair. So lower the temperature and slow down. Sounds like good barbecue, low and slow. Exactly. I'm loving it. I have to tell my mom because she she's older, so her hair is thinning. Mm-hmm. She still have long hair, but it's getting really thin. And I told her she can't use curlers. Like, she used the hot stuff on her hair and it makes it look weird <laughs> it does it's like it's, i told her it's like frying out the little fragile hair you got well you know as as things evolve sometimes they evolve and we stay the same and so it's a matter of you know telling mommy hey you know i've got a new idea for you and we get a different result and you're not going to work so hard and it's going to be easier on your hair and like you said you know women over 40 50 they start the hair thins naturally because of hormonal issues or medication and everything else so you have to dial down because that hair is more compromised and then as you work up and the hair becomes let's say it's not color treated it's in healthier shape it's got a wirier texture then you can go up with the heat but the key is the compression slow and deliberate because people tend to move fast they're clacking it sounds like a castanet when you walk in a hair right. salon you get kick, 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 kick. and really what they're doing is just putting more stress on themselves again and and these irons when you feel them in your hand robert's done a beautiful job you put a satin finish on it so that if your hand perspires you have product you're not grabbing har- harder and creating carpal tunnel or some of the negative issues that you have robert sounds like he know what women like with the satin finish and all of that sexy heat going on loving it yes I, you know jerry uh, let's do this for for our guests listening now and also for Tasha's mother. Let's share, because we haven't spoken about when to use a brush on your listener's hair that's very fragile. It's very important from the moment you let that hair down from the shampoo or when the hair is damp to understand how to care for it and to properly detangle it. So I'd like to suggest that uh, we send Tasha a special uh, ergo polishing paddle for her mother. Oh, I think that would oh, be great. that's so sweet. And with these paddles now, 
everyone's seen a paddle brush, but uh, generally paddle brushes are made with their pins or the different rows in a design that creates tension. So they're good for long hair, for uh, creating a little tension and smoothing it out. However, when hair is moist or wet, it's very fragile. So the Ergo Polishing Paddle is designed when you hold it vertically, in other words, put your thumb behind the paddle portion of the brush. We use it straight up and down vertically because our pins are in a special detangling alignment. So for your mother's very fine long hair, it would really make her smile when she can get through her hair without the type of tension that might cause a little hair to be left behind in her brush. You know, Robert, that that is such a great thing. And, you know, when we come back from the next break, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. And also we want to talk about some of your special friends that have uh, come forward in the industry and, and, and some of their stories and also what's new at Ergo. So we're going to run in a little break right now. So you're listening to Texture Radio. You're rolling on the hairwaves with Jerry and Tasha and our guest, Robert Reed of Ergo Research. And we're going to be right back after this commercial timeout. You're back on Texture Radio, rolling in the hairways with Jerry and Tasha B. And our guest, Robert Reed of Ergo Research. Robert, you know, um, our guests are always interested in what's best, what's new. And why don't you tell our our audience about some of the people, the professional leaders who have endorsed Ergo? Oh, Jerry, uh, I promise to be done with that within the next 45 minutes or so. But let's, <laughs> let's begin with... What's exciting right now? Because we've got an election campaign coming. Ooh, go Obama. And I was uh, in our nation's capital with Chad Clark, also from our design team. And we had a fantastic dinner with Johnny Wright, uh, hairdresser to the First Lady, Michelle Obama. Nice. And her hair always looked good. Her hair always looks great. And I learned a little bit about... um, the First Lady's hair preparation. I can't really speak to those secrets right now, but I will tell you that uh, when the First Lady joined the President for their trip to Asia and were in humid areas such as India, that Johnny Wright had our brushes there to help keep that hair shiny and resistant to humidity. And Johnny is one of our favorite supporters for our flat and smoothing iron. So it was always exciting to hear what it's like in the White House. And on the day we were with him, he was taping PSAs or public service announcements uh, with the First Lady. So it was the end of a long day. I think he said it was 12 hours of hairdressing and working with the First Lady. So I'm sure she was pretty tired, but... She was looking pretty shiny at the end of the day. Yeah, and it, it makes me proud because when I see, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a recognized industry expert, and I love Ergo, but when I see my counterparts, my peers, uh, you know, recognizing the forward thinking, the ahead of the curve mentality that you've always maintained with Ergo, and um, uh, people such as Kim Kimball, uh, Beyonce Knowles stylist, um, Philip Carrion. Uh, Vestilo, who was the, he ran the studio for Project Runway when they were in Los Angeles. I mean, these are the people who are the leaders, you know. Now, just yeah, saying. Keep, that- your eye, keep your eyes out for uh, Sasha Quarles, one of our supporters who is just finishing the tour with uh, Colin Farrell uh, nice. because they, they're working on the latest movie and with Sasha's completion of Gangster Squad, which has just been gone back into the editing room for release in January, but that's going to be a very exciting movie. And I've been on set with several of our supporters, and I must say, but I can't reveal the name, almost all of those famous stylists that are presenting irons on TV 
they still purchase their irons from Ergo for their personal and professional use. So that's a point of great satisfaction and pride for us. That's nice. And, of course, I'm going to have to start using it for my production coming up soon. So I have a play coming out in January. So all my artists and actors and actresses are going to need to use your product. Oh, we'd love to play with your hair. Of course. I'm and your hair you play. play. I'm going to have you play in my hair and play. Robert, real quick, any, anything new on the horizon tool-wise for Ergo? Yeah, I'd like to um, invite people to take a look around early October. We're going to be releasing a new texturizing iron for the upcoming fashion season, which is going to take place in spring. Now, in oh, a long many years ago, more than a decade ago, I introduced the first mini crimping iron, and this was to duplicate the type of look that was being gained behind the scenes at fashion shows with bobby pins. And I mean wrapping and bobby pins hundreds and hundreds mm-hmm. of times. It, was, it took hours to create these looks that were really a reflection of the 60s. Wow. But now wow. with natural texture hair, mm-hmm. we're with the new Ergo Mini Crimping Iron, we're going to be able to create fantastic retro and very chic texture. Bobby, you know what? We're running up on a hard break here. You know what? Can we invite you back on Texture Radio maybe in the fall so we can talk more about that? Because we've, we, we're, we're running up on a hard break, and um, we would love to have you back. Thank you so much. Um, Ergo has done so much for the industry and more importantly for our guests so both Tosh and I really want to thank you for coming on board Texture Radio tonight. thank you Robert I really appreciate it and I've learned so much but of course I'm going to keep following you because I'm going to need those products especially in January thank you I hope that some of your listeners will visit us at Facebook at Ergo Research Inc. I-N-C and see what's happening in the world of uh, professional hair and beautiful shiny hair thank you for asking me to join you today well, robert you have a great evening and uh we'll be seeing you soon and uh to all our listeners out there thanks for rolling on the hairways with jerry and tasha and uh we'll see you uh next week on texture radio